Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're doing another quick tip in Orca Slicer and we're going to be talking about the new uh, beta feature for scarf joints. Scarf joints is a very handy way of hiding, uh, another method of hiding your, your seam on your prints. Especially, this works especially well if you've got contoured shapes and things like that. Um, if you have hard geometric shapes, right, we have lots of good ways to hide joints there on inside and outside corners. But if you've got contoured shapes, it becomes a little bit more noticeable where your seam, especially if it's aligned. So. Uh, what scarf joints are really doing here, and if we just pull up a couple little pictures. So if you think about it from a woodworking perspective, if you have a normal aligned seam, like on a, on a cylinder type print, it's basically a butt joint, right? If you got a butt joint, if you have you know, an aligned seam at the back of your print, you have a butt joint where you just have your filament butted up against each other going up and all the way down the print. So in woodworking, we'd call that a butt joint. A scarf joint is where we're layering the, the um, we're, we're doing angled cuts on the wood and, and layering that on top, and it does a better job of hiding that seam. And so essentially what Orca Slicer is doing is it's adjusting the flow rate as it goes around a contour. So it's reducing the flow rate at the beginning and then increasing the flow rate as it moves around. And so you have different settings within Orca Slicer that you can use to sort of tweak and tune the length of the scarf joint and the, and the heights and the flows and things like that. So I want to basically walk you through what the beta features are related to scarf joints. And then that way you can go off and do some of uh, your own testing and try and get the best most invisible scene possible. Uh, and I will leave links to lots of the research that has been done and used and whatever uh, that have gone into developing and establishing and, and really kind of tweaking and tuning and getting good results. But there's lots of great stuff. And um, so if you if you haven't had time to go search for it, I'll link it in the description so that you can go do it. So let's pop over to Orca and let's see what we're doing here. So I'm gonna go to prepare first. And what I've done here is I've just brought in a couple of primitive shapes. I've got a standard, just plain Jane cylinder, and then a cylinder with a cube on top because I wanna show you the difference in one of these settings uh, where you may or may not want to apply scarf joints to it. Scarf joints, and I might have already said this, but they work best on contoured surfaces, right? Contoured walls. Uh, if you've got things like hard corners, inside or outside corners, those are really the best places to hide seams. Um, but when you're doing with a contoured surface, a scarf joint makes uh, makes good sense to use there. So under your quality tab, the way that we can go turn this on is under your quality tab, if you scroll down to the seam section here, we've got our typical stuff where, you know, line staggered, whatever. And then right here under scarf joint seam beta, right? This is by default tick to none, and then you lose a bunch of options. So if you want to turn it on, you essentially need to say contour or contour and hole. So if you've got a contoured surface like this with a hole in the middle, then it will treat both of those walls, those in those inner outer walls as a contoured surface and it will apply a scarf joint to it. And then that's where the rest of these settings take effect. So conditional scarf joint. So if you've got a situation like this, where you have a model on your build plate that is a combination of contoured surfaces and sort of hard geometric surfaces, um, then you would wanna have that applied. And the way that looks is like this. So if we go ahead and slice this plate, just with the standard sort of defaults that are there, you can see that here on this cylinder, we're applying a scarf joint. And on this cylinder, we're applying a scarf joint, but not on this cube, right? It's a standard joint. And the way you, you really need to see this in case you haven't ever played with the color schemes up here, but if you're, if you're just on the default line type, you really don't notice anything's going on in the preview, right? You just see your white lines where your seams are. So for scarf joints, what you want to do is actually change this over to flow. And when you change it over to flow, since that's what Orca's doing, is it's affecting the flow rate to, to uh, actually create the scarf joint. That's how you see what's going on, right? So in this case, if we go down some of these other contour or these other options here is conditional angle threshold. That is what angle of contour do you want me to apply this uh, scarf joint to, All right? So anything above 155 degrees, scarf joint speed, that the, um, the guidance here in general is 100 millimeters a second or less, right? Uh, works best at a little bit slower speed. So if you're running something fast, like a bamboo or, you know, whatever, uh, Voron, something with clip or something where you're running fast, the recommendation is run this on the slower side at around, at least for the scarf portion of it, at 100 millimeters a second or less. You can also, um, you can also do this as a percentage of speed as well. Uh, scarf joint height. So this one's a little weird. And, and the, the default is zero, and I haven't really seen any difference by changing it around. But basically, scarf joint height basically just means that it's it's expressed as a percentage or a measurement of your current layer height. So if I'm printing at a 0.2 layer height right now, and I put in something like 
0.05 millimeters, right? Then I'm saying I basically want the scarf to start at 0.05 millimeters. So if I slice this plate, um, then you're really not going to see much in the in the preview unless we zoom super duper far in. Um, but really, there there doesn't really seem to be a difference, and even in some of the guidance, uh, doesn't really seem to be a difference whether you start this at zero or a percentage or whatever. So for your testing, I would recommend just leaving it at zero for now. Um, with uh, the scarf around the entire wall, right? That is essentially overriding the scarf length. So right here, I have a 20 millimeter scarf length. So that's basically saying from the start here to out here in general, it's going to be 20 millimeters. If I tick this box, now this goes uh, grayed out. I'll have to re-slice the plate now. And it's essentially going to use the entire contour of the cylinder. And it's going to adjust the flow all the way around uh, until it creates the scarf, right? So pick your poison. Do some testing, see what you like best. So for now, I'm gonna untick this because this is best for my preview uh, for the video. Uh, I'm gonna leave this at a 20 millimeter scarf length. Scarf steps is expressed as the number of segment, the minimum number of segments of each scarf. So uh, the default is 10. I would rec, I haven't really seen any difference if I go 10, if I go 100, I haven't really noticed a difference here. So, um, Probably not going to make a huge difference if you tweak this up or down too much. And then scarf flow rate is just that. What, what do you want your standard flow rate to be for the scarf flow? Uh, and really this, I, I believe, is going to be affected at the very um, at the very top or bottom. So obviously at the beginning, since it's it's a basically almost a next to zero flow and then it's increasing that flow, it's only going to increase it up to a certain point. So feel free to play with this scarf flow rate here um based on your printer i think everything's gonna gonna change so you can decide if you need to go up or down with that with the flow rate and then this last one here is if you want to scarf joint inner walls as well so if we tick that box and then if we re-slice here we'll see the difference when we when we roll down the preview uh so essentially you can see here you know since we have a top surface it looks like it's just on the outer wall uh as we roll this down you can see if we zoom in and it's also applying the scarf joint to our inner walls too. Oh, sorry. Um, then that you right. So you can see this. So that's the difference. Um, I don't know that's going to make a huge difference. It might help hide it just a little bit more, but I don't know that it's going to make a huge difference, but that's for you to go play with and test out. So with that, that's really, that's really all there is to scarf joints. Um, I think pull in a couple of test models, change some settings, tweak a few things, but there aren't a lot of things that you need to go tweak. Um, and again, I'll, I'll link to some very cool um, documentation that's been put out around what uh, uh, a little bit more in-depth explana explanation on what these settings are and what they may or may not affect and if they should affect them, things like that. But those are like the key points. So there you go. I hope this is helpful. Like and subscribe. I'll talk to you all in the next one. Thanks a lot.